Okay, past this moment, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Why is the Endocrinology Society making a stance of vitamin D? Vitamin D testing isn't on co-calciferol, it's on calciferdiol. So it's not that like you're fasting intolerant tea. It's the fact that your literal, your literal hormones are going through a crazy, like, up and down. Yeah. Well, it's that thing that you just need to have something in your stomach to kind of settle it. Mm. Um, it's basically like the first trimester, you know, where you just, like, constantly have to have, like, small mm. little bits just to kind of, like, help the, the nausea. Yeah, anyone who like well everyone th- thank you for joining us today we're gonna, literally gonna go to vitamin d testing we're just having a bit of a bit of a conversation about like tracy's hormones at the moment because basically <laughs> so funny story last couple of days t's been going through some like nausea because of her hormones going up or down She's and, been insane <laughs> and, and for some reason i think like i'm be getting sympathetic nausea so like when t was going through her pregnancy Every pain she had, I would get. And then it's even like when you get ill, I get some sort of, oh, was it your hip pain? I started oh, getting hip yeah. pain. And I was like, what is I was going like, oh, on? I didn't realize you birthed a human. Yeah, and I was like, what is going on my system? But You've now been you, doing I'm it nausea. though ever since I've known you. So I think if it had just started with the like pregnancy stuff, mm. I would have been like... I'm going to murder you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's this weird thing. You've always been like that. It's like sympathetic pain, man. I feel like <laughs> Joey and friends, you know, when he's like going through, his like when, he, yeah. when she's having the uh, giving birth and Phoebe's just like, he's like, oh my God, my stomach. I, I'm like, jeez, yeah. man. You got to keep it to yourself though because it, be, it won't be taken well. Um, we've just put it up on, on YouTube. I think it's going to go down well. Okay, in past some way. this moment, keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping uh, Aaron goes through this. Oh, yeah. I'm he's hoping expecting Aaron goes through this. his baby very soon. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's uh, we'll just announce yeah. it to the world for you, Aaron, just in case it's okay. It's what we're here for. <laughs> we'll circle back when uh, his little one's here and. Ask him how was the break? And you wonder why, like, all the cameras are off, like nothing's gone right. All the one angles are wonky, and I'm just sad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's like, my hips are killing me. <laughs> Ogna's like, you better. <laughs> Right. The black eye. What you got that for? Oh. I said the wrong sympathetic thing. Pains. Sympathetic pains. Sympathetic pains. Sympathetic pains. So yes, this is what's happening in the Cannabis kind of Candid podcast right now. Behind we're the just, scenes, we're behind the scenes, yeah, we're yeah. discussing hormones. Yeah. Right. Chase is basically like descending into menopause. Uh, no. <laughs> Guy, drouch, guys. Tracy. 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 That's my name. That's my name. Tracy, I got something to talk about today. Mm-hmm. It's vitamin D testing. Now, Shock. I basically, have told. I was talking with Dr. John Roberts. Dr. John Roberts, for anyone uh, wondering, is a biological dentist, a good friend of mine, and someone I've you know talked to a lot about with vitamin D. And he's been quite a massive advocate advocate for using testing vitamin D in the the dental chair, and before like you know removing teeth and just generally for health really. And during the entire of like the word I want to say the word pandemic, not to say anything worse than that, but during the pandemic, he was um, sending a lot of information over to me about vitamin D because you know as you know like Dr. John Campbell was doing, he's made massive, massive movements with educating people on vitamin D in the trials. Now, the other, about, about the other week, John sent me a article from Medscape. And so Medscape, um, basically the Endocrinology Society in Boston, in America, um, put out a statement or a trial of their opinion on vitamin D testing. And he sent it to me and he was like, have you seen this? And I was like, no, let's have a look. And they basically came out and categorically said, we should not be testing people's vitamin D levels. And like, I, I, I was like, you gotta be shitting me. Like these guys are joking, right? And so I pulled up the Medscape article, got the clinical trial research, I'm going to link this in the description so you can read it yourselves. And I was a little bit, not only taken aback, I was really shocked. Firstly, why are is the Endocrinology Society making a stance of vitamin D, about screening vitamin D? That's my first question. Secondly, 
is my my other question is are they making this stance because we're now accepting vitamin d is a hormone and has such a massive function on health and thirdly why would we not be screening vitamin d it's nonsense like, okay <laughs> i was just going to say about the hormone thing when you said uh, the endocrine society i was like I mean, could it be that since vitamin D is a hormone that it's on their radar? Um, I mean, I'm glad that they're talking about it, to be honest. I mean, like it's it's better than it used to be where we just didn't acknowledge the role of vitamin D at all. And we barely spoke about it. So at least it's coming into conversation, right? I mean, I appreciate that it's coming into conversation and like, yeah, great. It's coming into conversation. But their stance is based on what like if you read the actual research and what their stance is based on i've got like i've got my phone out now because i want to read i want to quote some of what the things that they've said um one second let me just pull this up this was a session moderator right this chap's called um clifford j rosen he's the md director of clinical and translational research and senior scientist at main medical center of research and he said, um, note that screening for vitamin D is quite common in clinical practice, but the recommendation against doing so makes sense. And I was like, what do you mean it makes sense? So this is the statement, the quote that they put in. When clinicians measure vitamin D, then they're forced to make a decision what to do about it. That's where the question be, questions about the levels come in. And that's a big problem. So what the panel's saying is don't screen this really gets to the heart of the issue because we have no data that there's anything about screening that allows us to improve quality of life. Screening is probably not worthwhile in any age group. Like, hold the fuck up right now, okay? And sorry hold for the phone. <laughs> like, ho hold up. This Read the start of that. When clinicians measure vitamin D, they're then forced to make a decision to what to do about it. I'm sorry... When you go and become an MD, a doctor, a professor, a researcher, someone who we put, like we trust, like you trust your medical professional, if they're reading data, we, we don't, you don't have to have a position, but we want to understand that you know the research, you understand the research. So give me your opinion. But what they're saying is they're copping out and saying, we don't need to have a like a status we don't have to we don't have to we don't want to position on it because you don't want to fix it so that's the problem so the the solution is not to screen so if we don't know it's there are we playing schrodinger's cat with vitamin d <laughs> we li are we actually playing schrodinger's cat with vitamin d i like are you actually kidding me it's not just vitamin d but that yeah. that's literally saying well if we don't know then we we be damned if we do we're damned if we don't mm. like imagine okay Anyone who's listening to this, right? All my health, health, uh, all our health fans, all the people that are coming on and listening to this. If you were going, let's say, to the gym and you were trying to, let's say, lose weight because that's one of the biggest things that like are picked up on and you were going to measure it, how would you measure it? You'd measure it by going on a set of scales. You'd measure it on the weight circumference size. If you were training to be an athlete, you would train, okay, I lifted um, X amount of kilos and then in months time I lifted X amount of kilos. You track it. You track it, right? You and get a baseline, you'd do your plan, you track your progress and then you'd see where you get measured. I, yeah, you measure it. Mm -hmm. And so what I don't understand is, is we need to screen because what screening does Screening vitamin D allows you to see where the person's at because if they're supplementing or not supplementing, you can see where the person, how much vitamin the person's been taking, what the vitamin D is doing in the system. If they've got a health condition, don't forget about the health, health condition right now. What we're able to do is say, right, you've been supplementing, let's say, 4,000 IUs daily, but we know your vitamin D status is here and you've supplementing for, I don't know, two months or you supplement for 12 months, we can see where the baseline of the person is and then we can then look at optimising it and increasing the vitamin D levels. But if you if you increase the person's vitamin D levels, and there are, you know, you know, I know, we both personally know this, that people supplement a lot more because the research is now coming out that we need a lot more vitamin D supplementation because we, one, if we go into the sun, 
you, your body, your skin produces a lot more of that cold calciferol naturally at a much higher level of like 10 to 20 to 30,000 IUs. But if you're able to screen, you can then see what your baseline is and if you increase what it gets to or if you decrease what it gets to. Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult to optimize without getting a baseline because, as you say, we're luckily we're getting more data and we're getting a better idea of what our daily uh, vitamin D intake should be. But if you're coming from a place of deficiency or suboptimal vitamin D, then without establishing what that baseline is, it's really, really difficult to get the correct dosing to not only bring you back to an optimal place, but then also kind of figure out when you're at that optimal place so that you can start appropriately supplementing or doing whatever you need to to maintain that that level. That's very, very difficult to do without establishing a baseline. But I think what's happening is that because we're not establishing a baseline, it's preventing us from supplementing the correct dosage to actually bring you back to an optimal place. So because we don't actually know where the levels are, we're having to supplement much, much, much lower doses than are required to optimize your levels because we're we have this like fear that we're going to give you too much vitamin D. Whereas actually, if we just tested, found out your levels, we can do the calculation to figure out how much you require to bring you back to a healthy baseline. And then we know how much you will require to maintain that on a regular basis. We need to improve the education around it. But like what I find interesting is that getting your vitamin D levels tested used to be significantly easier Whereas now, at least in the on the NHS in the UK, I can't speak for all other countries, it's actually quite challenging to get your vitamin D tested. You can do the at-home test kit, which I don't know how much it costs now. So, I, I want to say like, like 40. Like £25? I no, think it's, like 25. it's gone up. It used to be quite inexpensive, but yeah. I think it's actually gone up in price, um, which is really good that there's that option that you can buy, but it's putting the onus on the individual again. Mm. Whereas like... Why is it not part of a standard blood test anymore? I mean, I can tell you because I think um, cost is a big factor. And also from this is anecdotal from speaking to um, some physicians here in the UK is that so many people were asking for vitamin D tests that the system just could not support it. So they had to create a separate avenue to do that. Um I think it's probably similar to the kind of STI testing and stuff that they changed over to that at-home service because the actual in-person services just couldn't support it, which is quite sad because if so many people were asking for it, then there's a reason. And the fact that when you go into your GP or whatever and you get your bloods done, you assume that that blood panel is actually kind of looking at all of the foundational aspects to support your health and that like a lot of people go in to get their blood test done and they're like oh as long as I'm within that range my foundation of health is okay but actually they're not looking at all of the aspects that are all of the markers that we need to be looking at that are important for foundational health vitamin d being a massive one so imagine all the people that are going through life and never getting their vitamin d tested but living in a northern hemisphere country like this let alone all the other factors, we know that you can't get enough vitamin D from the sun in a country like this. Mm. So why are we not paying more attention? Yeah. Well, T, like everything you said there is just like, it's the truth. The truth is the fact that we're not getting enough from the sun. Actually, just going to circle back. One thing I will say that I really appreciate what the endocrinologist endocrinologist site said, right? They were talking about food supplementation. I'm going to pull this up because it's just easy to read from the notes without misquoting them. Mm. And they basically said, due to the scarcity of natural food sources of rich in vitamin D, empiric supplementation can be achieved through a combination of fortified foods and supplements. Mm. They actually came out and said that, which I really appreciate. That's really for good that they're anyone, acknowledging it. Yeah, for anyone listening, stop telling me you're going to get vitamin D from food. Like, piss yeah. off with it. Like, I've seen so many Instagram, like, famous Instagram doctors talking about, mm. oh, you should eat this much fish and that. Listen, if you're taking, eating fish or eggs and you've got, like, 400 IU coming from, I think, some fish or eggs or something, that's not enough. But also, can I just add that... 
um, 400 IU is what Google tells you and our old files and data tell us that you're mm. getting from fish. But as we know, the food system has been categorically corrupted and you know it's not just our vegetables that are depleted of nutrients our animals are the exact same so i think unless something a food is specifically fortified with a certain quantity of vitamin d that's measured then actually don't tell me that it has this much vitamin d in it because we don't know that for sure and also on the thing of supplementing and fortifying food you have to be really careful because generally when food is being fortified with supplements there are fortified with nutrients they're going to be using the cheapest quality of course. um of of nutrients to be added so don't assume that because it's you're getting it through a food that that's you know a super natural form you're basically getting a very inexpensive supplement added mm. to that food and it's marketed to you as something that's healthier so but, that's a side but, that's, but, add, but adding to that as well you've got to remember cold calciferol needs to be converted into calcifidiol and calcifidiol needs to be converted into calcitriol mm -hmm. by the way which you need cofactors which for which you need cofactors for yeah. but that conversion needs to happen so just because you're getting 600 IU of cold calciferol doesn't mean it's being converted in to calcitriol because the adipose tissues and if you watched our other videos on vitamin d we talk about how cold calciferol gets leached into the adipose tissue the body holds on to it because if you're vitamin d deficient your body's trying to drip feed it into the system so you still have that regular dosage of it and by the way when we test vitamin d vitamin d testing isn't on cold calciferol it's on calcifidiol so listen if you're supplementing cold calciferol 4000 i use a day and you test like you know after it's like a year of taking it and your your levels aren't high that's not because the test is wrong that's because you're not supplementing either enough of it and your body's drip feeding it through or the conversion's not happening mm -hmm. and your vitamin D receptors aren't activated. T, I did my genetic test, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you saw my results. And in my genetic test, it I was said, horrified. Yeah, my, <laughs> my vitamin D receptors <laughs> yeah. came back as being really like, like turned off. They were like um, down regulated. Mm -hmm. So I needed a much higher dosage yeah. of vitamin D to feel the benefits. Well, that's another really important point that isn't discussed is that there can be a genetic aspect as well to like how much vitamin D you require and like on an anecdotal level we often talk uh, about skin colour in mm. relation to like how much uh, sun exposure you need or how likely you are to be deficient in vitamin D but actually that's really coming from the genetic aspect and if you don't have your genetics tested then you don't know if that's you um so and, and also mm. the I think the cofactors is a really important one to discuss and maybe actually want to do a separate video on because um, someone was talking about it the other day in that if you're supplementing with vitamin D and either you're not seeing the increase in your levels or you're feeling maybe unwell in some way or you're having a little bit of a reaction, you really need to be looking at your cofactors because it could be that it's getting stumped along the pathway and mm. maybe you don't have enough magnesium or you don't have enough um, zinc or boron or whatever, you know, vitamin A, all of those different things that are required along that uh, conversion pathway. So it's an important thing to think. So once again, sh we should be vitamin D testing. Yeah. You well, we cannot, you cannot, you cannot say anything against that. Yeah. The fact that we are like the fact that the endocrinology society have made a stance against it is really worrying because, they, you know, in in America, it doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost them. It costs the patient, the individual. And in the UK, there are ways of getting tested outside of the NHS. Oh and yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love the NHS. Everything the NHS has done for me when I was a kid growing up, mm. I appreciate it, but it's overstretched and burdened. Well, yeah, they're overburdened. Mm. And this isn't like a quip on them. I think one of the reasons, you know, like if you think about the setup, of course they don't have time to be testing all of these different nutrients and things like that. They're already at max capacity. Mm. But I think it's important to get the information out there that you can test you know it's relatively inexpensive you can get like your at-home test or um you can go to like a nutritionist often they offer testing there's lots of different outlets that offer vitamin d testing but as you said at the end of the day unless you're finding your baseline unless you're testing your vitamin d it's 
almost impossible to correctly optimize your levels. Mm. Um, you know, you can't just flood your system with vitamin D and then hope that it'll be washed out because we don't know what else is going on in your system. We need to understand what that baseline is so that we can properly do that calculation and get your levels back up to normal and then work on maintaining them. Mm. And trust and believe when you do that, it's like day and night. If you, I mean, we speak about it all this time, but if like, if you are deficient or suboptimal in vitamin D and you restore those levels, you're a different person. You can't tell me otherwise. Yeah. I mean, the, I think what the endocrinology site you were trying to say with the problem was, was the fact that there's no established levels. Mm -hmm. Like we have our established levels from like the vitamin D society. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'll link the chart below so you can see what we believe to be the good levels of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And the research that's been done on different conditions is that they need you need a, a above 50 nanomoles. But the only reason why they talk above 50 nanomoles, or, which is 20, and, or 20 nanograms per milliliter, it's because it's for rickets disease like everyone is talking about rickets disease listen rickets was a problem in the 1970s when we were really first like looking into it but we're not looking at it now that society and human beings and genetics and the bodies everything's changing now our understanding of science has changed so much so stop telling me about you need to have above 15 animals for rickets disease you know all these individual trials that are coming out for the health benefits Go to all the chance, go to Dr. Shane Campbell, l l listen to what he's saying about it. Mm -hmm. They're talking about all the other conditions that vitamin D is now linked to. We have psychologists buying our vitamin D testing mm -hmm. kit because they now see that vitamin D plays a role in how people's emotions and moods are feeling. Massive. In fact, one of the signs of low vitamin D is like low mood, mm. feelings of sadness, hormones massively Burn. associated yeah, yeah. like let's not just talk about I think a lot of people think of bones osteoporosis and vitamin muscle D growth. but like muscle growth muscle weakness yeah muscle tingles pain like so much so yeah but yeah um, we're we're gonna test Tracy's vitamin D levels so Tracy's gonna go gonna go off and wash her hands and come back that'll be me so I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly do this test on Tracy um, if you want to watch just watch me doing the test properly, just there's a I'll link another video in the description that shows my our rapid vitamin D test. And if you want to use our rapid vitamin D test and get tested yourself, then um, we'll I'll link uh, get a drip. There they've got clinics all around the UK where you can go get rapid um, rapidly vitamin D tested in that clinic and get your results within 15 minutes. But cool, do it. What do we do? I need to, I need to figure out. Okay, that's how quick the test was. We've already started running. Literally took literally what thirty seconds yeah. to get the blood, and that's it. So, what this machine's doing now is testing Tracy's vitamin D levels, and what it's going to do is present her results in nanograms and nanomoles per litre. So, what it does is we allows us to establish a baseline. Now, I take quite high dose vitamin D. I have been doing for a long, long time. Um, I have seen and felt a lot of health benefits. I've spoken to a lot of people who have seen a lot of health benefits, but I can do that because I screen every every three months. Every three months, I screen my vitamin D levels because I know when I'm messing with my dosages, when I'm taking a higher dose, I can look at that conversion and see what my vitamin D levels are, but I also can match it to my symptoms and how I'm feeling. So I know that if I go away and stand in the sun, or I'm eating foods that contain vitamin D, or I'm supplementing, I can know what those combination of things are doing for me. So stop telling me you shouldn't test vitamin D because I can then use that nanomole per liter or nanogram per milliliter, look at the chart and say, this is where my level's at. And it's all against your body weight as well. And there is actually a vitamin D calculation. I know um, there's a company that does one online it's okay that one online but um i'm actually going to link mm. our vitamin d calculator in the description below and if you want have a read of it and let us know your thoughts on vitamin d testing yeah and you know what's really interesting i think definitely your point in terms of because you're testing regularly you're able to do that kind of you know 
increased dosing or a kind of like change around your dosing. But what's really interesting as well is because of that regular testing, you can very clearly associate where your levels are at with how you're feeling. Like how many times have you just like been feeling run down because you haven't been on top of taking your your vitamin D you do the test and then you're like oh yeah that makes sense that my levels are there because I can feel you know these certain symptoms or whatever so Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting from a data perspective and as we said I understand why um you know testing isn't being pushed as standard because of like the resource aspect but how amazing would it be If we did start, you know, vitamin D testing across the board, like the data that could come from that is life changing because optimizing your vitamin D levels is life changing. Mm. So it's I think the aspect of it is, is the fact that when we screen our vitamin D levels, you have you establish a baseline. You're establishing a baseline of where you're where you're at and what you're doing, because imagine if you were, you know, push to take 10,000 IUs after the pandemic a lot of people were saying about taking 10,000 IUs daily be careful with that p word yeah but but (laughs) but (laughs) people were doing it every single daily if you can then test and say well if I've been doing for for, for, you know for the last two three years where have my levels at and then if you win the toxic levels of vitamin d that they call it then at least you know that you can reduce a dosage but it also indicates that vitamin d has a half-life and once again if you watch our other vitamin d video i explain vitamin d half-lives how every form of vitamin d has its own half-life and how long it functions in the system but that will also show you your body's going for half-life and how much it's utilizing remember the more you are like getting healthier the more you're like increasing going to the gym more going for walks or changing your food Mm -hmm. your body's nutrient intake also increases when you detox your body's nutrient uh, sorry nutrient um intake increases as well Mm -hmm. so all of these play major major roles so you know testing is a major 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 thing and we'll share tracy's vitamin d results in the description as well so you can see where she's at Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. But what you said is interesting because I think, you know, we need to start thinking about nutrients as the workers in the factory that it is our body. So like, you know, as you say, when you're detoxing, if anything, that puts more pressure on our resources in terms of our nutrients and antioxidants and things like that to help and support the body in doing that. So again, why testing is important, but also why we need to be thinking about nutrients and like our nutrient requirements as something that, you know, changes Mm. is because it does, depending on our stress level, our activity level, our diet, Um, you know, with vitamin D and pregnancy or breastfeeding, you know, your levels go up quite significantly in terms of what you want to maintain health so I think we just need to have this conversation more in terms of that there isn't necessarily you know certain general requirements that suit everybody all the time it's something that's changing and if you want to feel as good as you can feel if you want to optimize your health then you need to be getting an understanding of where your baseline is and understand how to get to that optimal level. 100%. And don't come at me with your supermarket vitamin D testing kit. (laughs) Listen, if you go to like in the UK and you're watching this and you go to like Sainsbury's, they've got like this vitamin D test. Yeah. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in like, it, it literally like, it's an archaic piece of technology that they're now pushing and it's just it's bollocks like it literally is just bollocks so yeah i'll sh- we'll share all the information let us know your thoughts about vitamin d testing and let me know what you th- think of the endocrinology society stance because it is interesting and i'm, I'm sure there's so much more to talk about it and let, let us know what you think because i think there's so much more to be said about vitamin d and i think we're going to be saying a lot more about vitamin d as well as we go on and also, if you have had your vitamin D tested, please share your results and your experience if you have been low in vitamin D and then you've supplemented to optimize your vitamin D. I would really love to hear your story of your feeling before and after and your journey with that because um, I know we've both had incredibly powerful journeys in terms of mm-hmm. simply just optimizing uh, vitamin D, never mind other things. So yeah, yeah, I would just really be interested in that. And share your IUs. 
Are you? Share, how are you, are you taking <laughs> Share your IUs. Yeah, yeah, come on. Share, share, tell us the truth now. Come on, tell us the truth. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.